uh, Andrew and the team, do you want to come on up and talk us through your new capital program report? Kia ora koutou. Uh, this is the August report covering the first two months and I'm pleased to have Lauren Barry next to me, our senior analyst from the PMO, to help me present it um, this month. Lauren's been um, what I call the chief architect in developing the new Look monthly performance report and she'll just navigate you through some of the important features and, um, and help with interpretation and, and reading this um, report as, you've se as you're seeing it for the first time. Um, it's as you can see, more visual, uh, more concise, and an easier to read format. We took into account some feedback um, after a meeting with the chair earlier in the year, and uh, have attempted to provide, I suppose, four key things, a, a better governance level focus, um, better forecasting visibility, especially in light of some of the challenges we had at the end of last year with forecasts, um, more focus on exceptions, and uh, avoidance of minor details. Um, Having, having said that last point, we're happy to take specific questions on projects if they're able to be provided to us beforehand or if we can't answer them on the day with the help of heads of service, we can, we can go away and, um, and find answers and come back to you with them. Um, key points in, in this month's report, then turning to the actual content of the report, um, the um, CCC Capital we've redefined um, as excluding only Takaha, previously had um, Parakiori in there as well. So CCC Capital now just um, is everything else except Te Kaha. Um, this this uh, month we've got a budget, um, a, a forecast from the project managers of 552 million against a budget of 483. Our PMO forecast is 450 million. We'll unpack that and talk about that a little bit more. Um, some of the exceptions that we'll talk about this month around the... Um, the cumulative PM forecasts against budget will be called out, and especially around um, digital waste and transport. So Lauren will just highlight some of those to you and, and talk about those points. Um, I just note that the digital report is not included in this month's um, monthly report. There's some work being done by that department uh, alongside the ELT, um, just getting a, a bit of a reset, and it will be reported back to you um, next month. Lastly, we've got a new watch list um, for this year. We review that each year and, and refresh that. So we did that in conjunction with the heads of service. Um, and as you can see in my cover report, some of the key criteria that we um, look for for inclusion on the watch list um, are things like um, scale and significance, the strategic importance, um, the public political profile, um, budget size, program kind of urgency, um, delivery delivery risk, and we try and get a bit of a balance across the portfolio without going um, overboard on the numbers on the watch list. So we've got 21 projects uh, this month. There'll be a 22nd one added next month, the Takaha surrounding streets, um, when that's packaged up a little bit better to be presented as a, as a single um, program. So, um, yeah, before I go to any questions, I'd like, Lauren, just to with your invitation, I think, Mr Chairman, to spend maybe 10 minutes just talking through the report format. Is that okay? Yep. So I'll hand over to Lauren. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, so before I get into the report, I just want to quickly outline what we set out to achieve uh, with this refreshed format. Um, firstly, we've taken a really big step forward in the automation of this reporting, um, so using technology and data that we already had in place uh, at Council. So this has made this report much more efficient and staff time to produce every month as part of our continuous improvement activities. Secondly, we really wanted to deliver an improved format, um, as Andrew's talked about, um, a report that's clean, easy to read, has good visual cues, um, and contains the right information for governance oversight each month. Uh, we've got this slight shift to a more exceptions-based report, so we want this to be easy to identify which parts of the programme are tracking to plan and where attention's needed. So I'll give you a quick run through of some of the key features in the new format. Uh, so we open on page 37 uh, with a summary page on the overall capital program, which includes Te Kaha. Uh, as you can see from the budget chart in the bottom right, that's very dominant in the program this year at 209 million, uh, or 30% of our overall capital budget. Uh, in the top right, we've got the financial charts, which we've carried through from the previous format. 
Um, we do have the addition here of the prior year actuals with the light blue line on the chart, you'll see. Um, and as we go through the report, this prior year actuals line becomes a really useful sense check um, for deliverability. So whether the project management forecast, that's the line in yellow, uh, with, whether they're within a deliverable range. It also shows us that uh, at the end of August the, that the spend is slightly ahead of the same reporting period for last year. Over to the left, we've got some summary commentary for the month, uh, followed by a program highlight that will feature each month. Um, this month uh, for this report, it's the commencement of construction on the next phase of the Northern Line cycleway. Um, so we also have down on the left, bottom left, uh, the project status summary. So this is based on the overall status flag as set by project managers when they do their monthly status reporting. So at an aggregated level like this, uh, this is a really useful gauge of program health, particularly when we contrast across the different service areas. Um, and we have some commentary on exceptions there through the, through the service area pages. Over on page uh, 38, so we're reporting on CCC Capital, excluding Tikaha, uh, which Andrew's mentioned. Uh, key thing to note here in this report is that all forecasts that you see are directly sourced from project management forecasts. The only exception there is the PMO forecast, which appears on this page only. So we've got that commentary uh, box in the top left. And then in the chart in the top right, we've got the PMO forecast at 450 million for July and August. Um, so in the line chart, we can see, um, and this is uh, just drawing attention to the forecast for CCC Capital, uh, the year-end project management forecast with the yellow line are still well in excess of budget and uh, in excess of prior year actuals. So we're really signaling that further work's needed on forecasts uh, at this point. Uh, to help close that gap between our project management forecasts and our PMO forecasts. Um, to sort of, in response to some of the challenges that we had uh, around forecasting at year end, you'll see this, this new chart in the bottom right. Um, this is where we have a quick comparison of how each area is forecasting against their current year budget. So we can see that the big areas um, for CCC Capital, Transport and Three Waters, we're currently forecasting to exceed budget at 122% and 114% through to waste management, which is um, obviously a much smaller part of the program, but is currently forecasting to spend 58% of budget for the year. Um, we'll have a quick look at some of the, the area pages. So after these two main summary pages, we go into this next level of detail um, with a page for each area, each major area of capital. So uh, the format for these is the same um, for each page, just for ease of comparison. Um, and I'll just highlight a few of the key features, uh, particularly um, looking at the Three Waters page on page 39. Um, so uh, we can see here that the yellow forecast line uh, in the line chart, so this is the cumulative project uh, management forecasts, are ahead of budget um, with forecast result of 114%. But we can see as well with the prior year actuals um, that that forecast is not significantly in excess of prior year actuals for Three Waters. Um, this is a good indicator um, that the current forecasts for three waters are within a deliverable range, and we can see that it's that spends already slightly ahead of uh, same point for last year for three waters. Uh, an important new feature on these area area pages are the tables at the bottom. Um, so these are the projects in each area that are currently forecasting the largest variance from current year budget. So we have top fives at each end of the scale. So on the left, the projects that aren't forecasting to spend the full 24 FY24 budget. And on the right, those, are the, those that are forecasting to exceed their current year budget. So we've included this to help show where we might have discrepancies from plan. Um, and we also hope and expect that these tables will help to drive a focus on forecasting accuracy and making sure that um, we're doing active budget allocation throughout the year as well. Uh, as part of the summary commentary in the top left, uh, we're just noting um, the key factors for the red and critical projects that we see uh, in each area. Um, in the three water space, a uh, number of the red projects are reporting cost pressures and ongoing consenting challenges in particular. Uh, if we have a quick look at transport on page 40, um, currently forecasting to exceed budget at 122% uh, for the year. In the line chart, um, we do see that the, the forecast for transport in yellow are significantly higher than last year's spend. Um, transport's, uh, there's been a slower start to the year uh, from a financial perspective, 
Uh, this is clear from the wee percentage budget spent and forecast spent gauges. Um, we can see when we look across sections that the transport spend is to date is proportionately a bit lower than some of the other areas of the program. And uh, we're recommending that there's some forecast review um, completed in this, in this space. Some of the key issues that are contributing to the red projects in the transport space are around cost pressures, again, uh, and program interdependencies with KiwiRail. Uh, just briefly to Otakaro Avon River Corridor on page 43. Uh, we see a higher proportion um, of red projects here, although noting this is a smaller program with fewer projects. Um, the reds here are mostly in the stormwater space uh, with issues that have been well reported previously around uh, budget shortfalls, consenting and contaminated land. Just touching on waste management on page 44, um, as I said, this is a relatively small part of the program with a budget of 7.3 million, but um, uh, with a current forecast result of 58%, so it's not forecasting uh, to be spent this year. There's a number of dependencies in the program and um, there's some active forecast review happening in this space at the moment. Just a quick note on other capital on page 45. Um, just important to note that there are, this includes some key projects this year. So um, for example, in corporate capital here, we've got uh, the Performing Arts Precinct, uh, which is included in the watch list and libraries here, which will include South Library. So that's the, the main report. Um, then we move through to the watch list in Appendix 1 with our new one-pager format. Um, just to look at an example page, uh, let's, we can have a look at Performing Arts Precinct on page 50. Um, on the left side of the page, we've got more static descriptive project fields. And on the right side, we've got our status update fields, including a nice, clear monthly update from our project team. Um, just noting here on the watch list flags, so the overall status on the top right is as set by project manager in their monthly report, whereas the financial status and the time status flags are calculated based on baseline versus forecast information that you see here. And uh, we have a key breaking that down further on page 46. And then uh, if we move into appendix two from page 68, you'll see we've got the quarterly transport choices and craft reports included this month. So these are in the same format that you received last quarter with May reporting. Uh, for transport choices on page 69, there's been really good progress since last report with scheme designs now complete uh, within that original time frame of September 2023. 20, uh, pending council approval this week and uh, costings being finalized. So the program's preparing to move to construction with start dates between now and December, just subject to the finalizing of the cost share agreement with Waka Katahi. Then we have the CRAF report from page 70 with a summary of the seven programs, followed by a breakdown of each at project level with financials and uh, milestones. So since the previous report, we've had construction start on a couple of projects. Um, Transport Choices has taken precedence for the design and project management resource, but this is also, this is now starting to ease in the space. So that's where overview, um, happy for any feedback and questions? Yeah, hey, thank you very much. That's I think it's been worthwhile spending the time to go through it okay. um, so that everyone can now understand going forward how that looks. Um, for me, it's far easier to read. Uh, and um, I was really pleased that it's automated and the oh, fact that it saves you a lot of time is, yeah. is really good as well. Um, probably the, the, I don't have a question, just uh, really good feedback in terms of the graphs. I thought what was really interesting was the, the forecast versus the cumulative actual. Mm. Um, so as a council, looking at that is probably going to be the key one for us to kind of get a gauge on how that capital program is um, is working. Celeste, you had a question? I think. Oh yeah, thank you. Very um, well presented and I like the um, capital um, watch list, the way that's formatted, it's quite clear. Um, there's just a couple of projects on that, that capital watch list that seem to be missing. One of them would be the Pages Road Bridge. Can we get that added? What's the process for that? Yeah, we considered that one. There's not a lot of budget on this year, so there won't be much sort of movement on it. Um, we've got it parked up and put it on the watch list next year <laughs> list. Um, can you recall the budget, Teresa? Mm -hmm. it's, it's not much budget on it this year because it's in the design, yeah. early design and engagement phase. Um, so it's intended to get it on the watch list when there's more activity to report because it'll be pretty static if okay. we put it on this year. And That's other, good. Well spotted. <laughs> yeah. Oh, thank you. Mm. Um, 
given that it's the number one transport project, it'd be good to have that on there. And then the other one would be the um, Otaka Avid MCR, which is still on budget, because um, we've got all the other ones on there. Thank you. Yeah, we can have a look at Yanni. that. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. thanks, Elise. Yanni. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you for the report. It's, it's really nice. It's good, great to see it. Lots of information. I, I guess I'm just trying to, um, I mean, two, two main questions. One is looking at the, the phasing. So if I go to the, um, which probably won't surprise anyone, but the craft projects, I, I'm trying to understand like when, what the sort of timeframes are, the key steps are. So like we're in the investigate phase. We've been in the investigate phase for I think about four years now. So I'm trying to understand like when, what's the target to move to that next stage? So it's almost like a, you know, a rocket ship, but you can kind of see mm. what the key milestone, the next key milestone is in terms of meeting the objective. I guess I'm, I'm concerned that we're behind time, but I don't have any way of knowing that. Okay, good, good question. We've got Jacob coming up to answer. So, um, <coughs> so at a program level, it's quite difficult to say that. So some of the projects like it says up there, are on the ground. There are other ones which um, linked things we're doing in surf, so they'll be approved over the next couple of days or, or otherwise, that's for your decision. Um, and there are others that are very much in the sort of early design phase. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> we'd need to go into every single project and break that down, I think. Um, it's just and there are 38 projects within the craft programme. Yeah, it's, it's just because there's so much overlap between the surf and the craft mm. that it's completely confusing to follow. Yep. Like which budget, and and it's completely confusing because some of the budgets in Surf have blown out and are taking money from craft projects, but we don't have the costings for the craft projects. And so if those projects, although we can see here, like the slip grain lane upgrade is over forecast, so how do I make sure that we have sufficient money for that one, rather than the Surf eating up all the craft money? Do, do you, I wonder. I get what you're saying, and so two things. I wonder whether you just want to explain the difference between the change in forecast as opposed to the change in budget would be the first one. So, I mean, it's, it's you know, if, if things have been brought forward or that, that this is capturing, as I understand it, the spend in the year, because that's what we've asked for. Mm. So if things have been pulled forward or pulled back, there will naturally be, be changes in that program. So can you just talk through that for a start? I'll have a crack at it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, so, I mean, the, the surf one, as Lauren's reported, and I think there's some decisions to be made tomorrow about advancing into the construction phase is, is, is in, um, it's in good hands, I think. Yeah, we've, we've met um, deadlines for the scheme design and need to move into construction quickly in order to satisfy the funding agreements. There's, there was some rationalisation between the scope of the CRAF and the surf projects to um, reallocate budgets to ensure that project synergies were um, were achieved and, and because there were some overlaps there. So I don't think it's right to say there was budget kind of taken from one or another. It's about getting optimal kind of project scope and budget alignment. So that's, okay, cool. that's so, kind of one thing. So I'm aware that people in Smith Street are not happy with the design. They'll probably, some may make deputations tomorrow. We might want to go for a more extensive yeah. design. So, so those but real that, detailed questions, Yanni, as I understand it, speaking with Lynette before the meeting, there's been a meeting offered to you to go through a lot of your specific concerns and the hope we could kind of address them but you haven't, we haven't quite confirmed that no, but just, I'm just trying to understand from a financial point of view what I'm concerned about is change requests that are coming ahead of us approving some projects that are over budget from the design but we haven't finalised the decision there's other projects that the community board has already agreed to so it's approved the design mm -hmm. that's now being shown as not having sufficient budget so I'm just trying to understand how we address that so that we don't just end up with a few projects getting the funding and then having this dilemma that the projects that we've already agreed mm. don't have enough budget. So can I be clear that the surf projects haven't taken money from craft um, from craft budgets that have overrun. So we some of the craft projects also met the criteria for surf projects and they were moved across and took a small chunk of that budget for our 10% um, contribution. So we haven't topped them up as we've gone through. Um, the overall program budget for SURF is roughly the same as it was when it started. Okay. So just um, the other question I had was just in regards to like um, the, the watch list, like Butterfield and Worcester Street renewal. And I just wonder, I guess I'm just a little bit concerned that the watch list is great, but what where it doesn't kind of have the 
um, related projects. So if I, if I look at Worcester Street, we've done a, some sort of maintenance renewal down the middle. The sides are in really bad shape, haven't been touched. We've got the safety projects happening as part of SURF that we're being asked to agree on Friday. And then we've got the, um, the CREF one to renew it coming a year later, right? So I'm just wondering, is there a way that we can get visibility of along at like Worcester Street. Oh, and we've got an MCR possibly going down Worcester Street as well. So I'm just trying to understand how do you get visibility of the whole amount of works? And I mean, you'll, you'll recall we've had problems in the past where we've done- Okay, um, you've made your question and point. Renewal just so, Yanni, stop. Just, yeah, cool. if, if there's a response you can give. So like I say, yeah. there has been a meeting offered as well from Lynette. So no, I've, had, I've met with staff over the submissions. Yeah, so that okay, okay, just stop. Right, have you got a response? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> No, I, I think with something like that, we'd, we'd need to sit down and lay out a plan and, yeah. and talk through it in detail. Um, I don't think I can give a short answer. No problem. Tyrone, and then Sarah, and then Victoria. Kia ora. Um, Andrew and Lauren, thank you so much for the... Didn't mean to exclude you there, Jacob. You know, you're, you're wonderful too. Um, but look, it's just... I recognise some power VI artistry when I see it, and I really appreciate it. And for me, it, it just is... A game changer it's so clear and easy to understand my question is um, just on the on the sort of the negative positive project variances table that's at the bottom of each of those um, things um, presumably um, well I know you can um, do it for every single project that we that we have is there any thought given into providing elected members with visibility of, of projects kind of so that you know like a a, a report that they can just click on a project and sort of see where it is. I'm not saying that, that you need to, I mean, obviously we don't want elected members going, oh, my project's $1 million behind, it's, you know, but but just to give sort of visibility of like where projects are, are sort of sitting, like a drop down thing and you can select a project and that kind of thing. Yeah, through you, Mr. Chairman, um, that is something that we have thought about and, and we do have the capability to do that. Um, it's it's a it's in development, I guess I'd say. So the ones that we've pulled out, looking at those principles that I talked about at the beginning, for this program management office report, we've got to keep it up at a higher level, program level, governance level. Um, obviously, when you get into the watch list, we've um, we do have the ability to pick any one of the hundreds of projects that there are. Um, we want to work with the project managers and the heads of to ensure that the information that we get um, straight out of the project management system could populate a um, accurate and credible report in a timely way. So our, our vision is <laughs> down the track that we could have um, we could have any one project pulled up for you or potentially ac that you could access to have a look at. But we need to rely on the PMs um, and the heads of and the sort of moderation of that to make sure that um, the comments that are in there um, are um, appropriate to be published. So that's part of our role in the PMO is when we do these reports, we provide a, a moderating view and we check and review everything. To check and review seven or eight hundred projects is a bit of a bit of a mission. Yeah, no, I so it would be kind of a bit raw, but that's where we want to go to. Um, in the fullness of time, we'd get we'd get PMs being able to um, populate the data in the system that would draw straight into a project watch list for any project that we that we carry. Yeah, and I know it's really tricky because obviously they're going to trigger a whole lot of unnecessary yeah. questions. Yeah. 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 Oh, it's beautifully presented and um, I just really um, just like the way we're heading with this, so thank you. So, Councillor Fields, uh, I appreciate that you've uh, said thanks to the staff and uh, I think you've recognised as well exactly the dilemma and challenge of doing it right down to every single individual project. Yes, I knew, I knew that, that, that as soon as I started to say that, Dawn, you'd be like... <laughs> I would, on the basis that what we don't want to be doing is constantly chasing oh, I get our it. tails. I get it, yep. We want to provide you with the right information at the right time and enable officers to do their job to the very best of their ability and bring the stuff to you. Sarah. Thank you. Um, just a query on um, what's currently called SW Pages to Bridge in the OARC. Um, so page 67 of the agenda. Um, just 
a little concerned that when we're doing some value engineering, we'd be um, looking at things that are probably crucial for environmental and climate resilience things from that. So it says here, such as uh, reducing the scope, such as removing the sheet pile wall and cut off drains separating the contaminated groundwater from the Bexley landfill. Um, those kind of things, I think, we really need to make sure that we take that long-term lens over these projects um, when looking at sea level rise um, and environmental concerns, because this is going to be in place for a really long time. Um, so just a wee bit concerned if that's where we're doing some value engineering from. And also just making sure that these kind of projects and the work that's been done in the background on them um, actually goes to the co-governance committee um, for early engagement rather than um, just a proposal once something's kind of been designed already. Um, that would be good. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. Uh, Victoria. Uh, thank you also from me for the uh, improved reporting. Um, reading these reports is usually quite hard going, but it was almost joyful, so thank you for that. <laughs> uh, right information, right time. Um, we're continuing to see um, disparity uh, between project budgets and forecasting in some areas. Um, it's ongoing. So I'm keen to understand what is actually happening to address this and have you got confidence going forward that we're actually doing enough to reduce that risks uh, of overspend? Oh yeah, through you, Mr Chairman. Yes, it's an ongoing kind of improvement programme. Um, it's about um, building capability from PMs and getting a better understanding about the importance of budget and program alignment. Um, We've held a couple of workshops um, facilitated by the PMO, PMO to raise um, awareness and, and provide a bit of sort of education and thought leadership around this piece. Um, one of the principles I've sort of applied to this new format report is, is the um, respect what you inspect. <laughs> and that is if we shine a bit of a light on these variances, we should get some um, better attention to getting alignment what I, what I would say is when there's variances, um, they're not always bad things. They, they, in some cases, they might be a good thing. It might indicate that the progress of the project is going really well. It might be accelerating and they're going faster than they first planned. So there's a, a, a variance that arises from that. But notwithstanding that, I'd still like to see adjustments made to get the budget put in the right place to align with program. So it's an ongoing improvement piece. We'll work with um, heads of service and PMs to continually um, ultimately close that gap between what we see as the PMO's forecast to the aggregated PM's forecast. So as we flush these ones out, the bigger variances, we'll just provide another five <laughs> that have variances and, and, and gradually um, get them better aligned. Uh, Councillor Henstock as well, I think it's important to recognise um, the work that the City Council is doing in its capital delivery when it's compared to other local authorities in New Zealand is actually in the vanguard. So all the time we are striving to get it better and better, but when I compare our delivery to many others, we are absolutely knocking it out of the park. So it's great that you're getting that real focus, and I think you're asking the right questions around how we look at actuals versus the predicted and ultimately the nirvana is to get it to do that and that's the focus that we will continue to have which will continue to improve our performance it's good to see some teams are getting pretty close to that yes they are which helps others to have a little bit of competition great yanni um <clears throat> just to pick up on the i guess things that aren't on there that would be good to have on there um uh, so the wastewater treatment plant, and I appreciate it's in an insurance situation, but you know that also the organics plant. So are they kind of flagged for next year as well because of the same advice that you've given Celeste? Yes, yes they are. Yep. The watch list's not entirely static. We can add or subtract to it, but we try to put things on there that were actually active. So if there's not a lot of activity on them yet, we'll just kind of suspend them. We've got a, a reserve watch list, and so some things in the future we've, we've already identified as being included when there's, when there's yeah, more activity. Yeah, and that was kind of what I think you alluded to at the beginning around the principles you've set for the reporting. So yeah. as stuff crops up where there's actually stuff happening and it makes sense to have it on there, if it aligns up with those, they would. Yeah, so. and the only other one I had a question about was Lancaster Park, where I see it's in the parks, um, you know, the, the kind of overview. Mm. But... Um, 
was, wasn't that originally as a standalone item on the watch list? And why has that one been taken off given how much money is being spent on it and it's currently in the middle of the process? Is there uh, a, uh, just, yeah, I think is do, it, do you want to add it's in, off. Yeah. We took it Through off. The chair, it used to be on the watch list, yes. Yeah, yeah. But it's not complete yet. No, it's not complete. Okay. I think there was only a small budget left for completion, and in terms of this, the sort of criteria that we that I've referenced in 3.6 in my cover report, um, it's not to say it's unimportant, but is it of strategic importance? You know, is it um, a delivery risk? Does it have high um, sort of scale and significance in the total program? So we pulled it off to keep the focus on what should be strategically aligned projects. So it's not unimportant, but we didn't see that it met the criteria for for the inclusion on a watch list. I mean, yeah. And in, in terms of like this park, it's, it's running well ahead of program, and it's now in a sort of lower category of um, budget and cost compared to the other projects that we and risk in terms of the other projects that are on the watch list. Okay. That's why we made a decision that it no longer needed to be on a watch list because of the low risk element. Through, through you, Mr. Chairman, if, if at the pre-agenda setting meeting there's a, you know, within reason, a few questions about specific projects, we can take them and come prepared for the yeah. for the actual meeting to answer them, and that might be a good example yeah. if you wanted us to draw something out specifically that wasn't in the watch list. Yeah, yeah. we no, have no, to do that. that. Is, um, well understood. Thank you for that. Okay, Kelly. Yep. Yeah, no, I just want to um, add my voice. Um, I think this is a really really excellent report I, I love the way it's laid out now I, th I think you've done a fantastic job here everything you need is is there so yeah good job appreciate it thanks okay well I'm happy to m thank you both very much um, I'm happy to move this Aaron's happy to second it any discussion Tim yeah look we, we talk quite a lot about um, sending questions to and having them so preparing staff to answer them right across every meeting that we talk about. So should I just, uh, maybe a reminder from the chair and all chairs from their committees that if they just send an email out just saying if there are any questions, I mean we all have them on the spur of the moment but it's just to help staff and ourselves, it'd be really good. Great, thank you Tim. Uh, anything else? No. Hey, well, just a big thank you uh, to the team. It's come a long way since we met earlier in the year to, to talk about it um, but it, I think it's a lot more understandable not only for the uh, our colleagues but also for the wider public and again, focuses us and as a council on sort of those things where there could be issues and the like as well. But I think the other good side of this is that we haven't just focused on the problem childs. We've sort of talked about some of the good stuff as well um, because, you know, we deliver a massive program and there's a lot of good work that carries on. So thank you both for the work you've done on that. Moved and seconded, Mr Buchanan. Yeah, I'm in debate. Okay, so, yeah. uh, so that's moved and seconded and it'll be carried. So all in favour? Aye. Against? Thanks, that's carried. Thank you. Right, we'll move into public excluded now. Uh, so we'll have to clear the room of anyone that isn't here for this item. Tim looks like he's happy to move it, and Victoria looks like he's happy to second it. All in favour? Against? That's carried, so we'll just give it a minute. 